So why care about string theory, a theory supposedly of physics that has no experimental support so far? Brian Greene explains why in this beautiful book, Fabric of the Cosmos. Joe Collin has a very nice, less popular, a little more technical book, Why String Theory, where I stole this title. Joe Polchinski has a string theory book that's a textbook, but it does have some general discussions that I think are very useful. The objective of this video is not really to learn about string theory, but to find at least one non-textbook technical reference you want to read and learn whether you want to be interested in string theory or not. The textbook answer to why string theory is it contains classical gravity, quantum gravity, grand unification, extra dimensions. These ideas have showed up in other contexts. Supersymmetry, chiral gauge couplings, like in the Stana model, left-handed and right-handed particles at different gauge representations. No free parameters, and is the theory unique? Classical gravity and the Stana model are clearly important, experimentally well-established topics, so if string theory helps to understand them, that could be interesting. The other ones are new ideas about the future. The popular answer was given by Conlon in his book. It could be that the correct theory of quantum gravity has nothing interesting to say about mathematics, is disconnected from the Stata model, tells us nothing new about quantum field theory, and offers no additional insights into theories of classical gravity. However, to many it seems unlikely, and this feeling explains why string theory is so wildly viewed as the best candidate idea here. This long quote, I think, says it all. You might say that the guy recording this video is clearly biased in favor of string theory. I made it clear for you in my thesis that I didn't write about string theory. I like string theory, and I want to tell you now why I like it. But I will mostly quote smart people who have said they like it for other reasons. Let me start here. Gravitational waves were recently detected, according to LIGO collaboration, from a binary black hole merger. Of course, this sounds extremely exciting, if it's true. But one interesting feature of this discovery paper, that you can look up yourself, is that until the Chapel Hill conference in 57, there was debate whether they exist. This conference was organized by my supervisor, Cecile DeWitt, who unfortunately passed away the week I'm recording this video. And at this conference, Richard Feynman described what is called the sticky beat argument that has a Wikipedia page. This is a very interesting story in itself, and I will come back to this in other videos. Cecile and her husband, Bryce DeWitt, moved from Princeton to Chapel Hill, North Carolina in the 1950s to establish a new research institute, privately funded. They hosted that conference mentioned in the LIGO article. Incidentally, Peter Higgs came there in 65 and wrote one of his big Higgs papers there. And the DeWitts later moved to UT Austin. This is beautifully described in the biography of Bryce DeWitt. In 1963, I gave a student of mine the problem of computing the cross-section for graviton, graviton scattering. Graviton would be the quantum carrying the gravitational wave, just like the photon is the quantum carrying the electromagnetic wave. The relevant Feynman diagrams would be these. They lead to over 500 terms, but the final result is very simple. In string theory, there's only one diagram. Its contribution is relatively easy to compute. String theory is much better than he originally thought. Just incidentally, when we think about things like graviton scattering that doesn't seem to have a lot of application, I do think it's good to always keep in mind the connection between basic and applied research. For example, Beta's work on fusion, how the sun shines, his paper Energy Production in Stars, one can say is directly connected to the attempts to build a fusion plant in France uh, that's currently underway. Please look at this site if you're interested. This just reminds us that things that are seem very abstract and distant can be related to things that are potentially of benefit to society. Quantum gravity in the 2000s, so you can take Bryce DeWitt's drawing here of a string diagram. You put non-perturbed states as external states, like Dirichlet brains, that I will talk about in a later video. Loop diagrams of string theory are then the lowest order interaction between these non-perturbed objects. However, many things remain unclear. Loops with less than maximal supersymmetry, non-trivial backgrounds, and many other things. Still, there was progress. This very interesting relation between a string theory paper from 1986 called KLT that led to progress on the idea that maybe gravity is the square of gauge theory, as is sometimes stated. In fact, for recent topics, when teaching string theory, I propose some student projects that you can yourself evaluate whether you think string theory made useful contributions to any of these 26 fields. Some of them might seem surprising to you, like philosophy or computer science. For this last one, just look this up. Um, I will just do a couple of quick summaries of a couple of these, if you're interested. But you can easily find references about this yourself by quick Googling. String theory and superparticles. Supersymmetry was discovered in string theory in 1971. The maximally supersymmetric quantum field theory, with Lagrangian here, was discovered in string theory, as summarized beautifully here by Laura Spring. Supersymmetry has not been discovered, however. Notice a different use of discovered in these three sentences. But I think it's fair to say that supersymmetry gives useful models for theorists, whether or not it is directly relevant to current particle physics, as explained, for example, in this paper. And I'll come back to this a little bit later. I won't go through all these projects, but, but let's consider cosmology other. By that I mean, for example, inflation. So these fellows describe inflation in this book very nicely. They put it on the archive also. They explain why inflation is important. And 
these people actually try to match some of the models discussed in this book to data. So this is one example that string theory could be relevant to physics with experimental implications, but it's very far from saying that that's the case yet. How about string phenomenology? Is that an oxymoron? as Fernando Quevedo asks here. He says that string theory actually makes many predictions, especially at or close to the string scale. Clouseau clan tower states, massive string states with specific behavior under high energy scattering, etc., which should be the natural case for theory of quantum gravity. Some string snares have many other potential implications at much lower energies, which is encouraging. I should emphasize that some people, like Neymar Khan Ahmed, seem to occasionally disagree with these statements here. How about the Hawking radiation information paradox? The entropy of a black hole, given by the Bekenstein Hawking formula, can be computed from state counting in string theory. This works mainly for supersymmetric black holes to get the right coefficient, and this is explained in textbooks. The resolution of the information paradox is more unclear. Hawking gave up his bet with Preskill, if you know about that, due to anti desitter conformal field theory duality, also known as holography. This is a wonderful topic, in my opinion, that is well described by these people here. A lot of the topics in my project list have to do with ADCFT. I won't talk more about it here, but if you're interested, please take a look here. Algebraic CFT, by that I mean some of quantum field theory with conformal symmetry was actually discovered in string theory, as reviewed in this book. Some people think that mathematically well-defined quantum field theory might come ultimately from conformal field theory, as described on this Wikipedia page, which is largely about mathematics. I might say in string theory you get usually supersymmetric theories, as argued by Douglas, a solution to the problem in a sufficiently general class of supersymmetric theories would in fact imply the solution of the original problem. And he's talking about the Yang-Mills Millennium Prize problem to define Yang-Mills theory mathematically. So maybe string theory could help with this kind of discussion. In a similar vein, path integrals or functional integrals versus operator formalism, canonical quantization. These two descriptions of quantum theory are both you know, useful and valid. Many people in physics think that it was invented strictly in physics, but actually Norbert Wiener published this article in 1923, as described by Cartier and DeWitt Moret in this book. So this is an interesting topic that maybe string theory can add something to. In Polchinski's textbook, for example, he has a short course on path integrals, where he argues one may cut the world sheet surface open along many different closed curves. Different choices give a different representation of going from here to here. So this is an interesting question in string theory. Another interesting question for scattering amplitudes is also the existence of dualities. We will not discuss ultraviolet issues in this paper, since there are none. Strength theory and philosophy. Most of us are not philosophers, but this is an interesting little project. Read some of these references and try to understand what they're saying. This paper says, string theory has been playing the role of a well-established approach towards the universal theory of all interactions for over three decades and is trusted to a high degree by many of its exponents in the absence of either empirical confirmation or even a full understanding of what the theory amounts to. Weimer says, it may certainly not be confirmed by mathematic reasoning, which is precisely what is discussed here. So again, I'm not an expert, but this me and these are pretty interesting questions. Like most physicists, I feel pretty comfortable with this statement. Another interesting topic in mathematical quantum field theory is discussed in Weinberg's textbook. He writes, by Feynman, Fadem, Popham, and DeWitt, they were figuring out how to compute loop amplitudes involving gluons or generally gauge bosons and they have these funny ghost fields going in this loop. This is a warming up exercise for the harder problem of quantizing general relativity that was progress made on physically relevant theories and this will come back in a later video. Let me finish by mentioning a few aspects of the rich connection between string theory and mathematics. So there's a beautiful cover by Dijkraff of this book where I stole this kind of idea. First is in 1968, maybe early 70s let's say, People were celebrating Feynman diagrams, everything was making sense. Mathematicians were celebrating index theorem, things like that, things were making sense. And if you fast forward 30 years, you notice that we're considering each other's topics. But we feel a little confused. Dijkraft's cover is much funnier than mine. This book was from this time, what is happening now? The three loop amplitude and string theory was first computed in a few years ago. Uh, the six point amplitude was very well understood in this paper, but I would say there's still a lot of interesting questions about scattering amplitudes in recent work. And one example is Moonshine Beyond the Monster by Terry Gannon, a mathematician, and this is nicely reviewed by Shamit Kahu, a physicist, that the conformal field theory on the K3 service, you can compute this quantity. The numbers you get here as coefficients, 90, 462, and so on, have significance as the dimensions or representations of a sporadic group, which is interesting to mathematicians. There are also new formulations. This is also work in progress. The old formulations, I mean Green-Schwartz or ramon and schwartz formulations, they're written in textbooks, but newer formalism from 2000 is a pure spinner formalism. Space-time supersymmetry is manifest. You can compute loop amplitudes and define a BRC operator that I mentioned earlier in terms of a pure spinner and this uh, object that gives a space-time supersymmetry derivative. So you should decide for yourself in this paper, 
and as follow-up you can see some of my motivations why I think string theory is exciting.